Hi friends, how are you? This is Miss Pamela here from Yellowbird Studio. Today we are going to be working on our taxidermy bug project. I'm going to show you a little sample here of the one that I made. Basically, we are going to go through all the steps together of how to make these cool kind of 3D bugs, and you will have the choice of mounting them on the cardboard that we supplied for you, kind of like the taxidermists do with little insects, or you can keep them loose if you would like and maybe just use them as fun decorations around your room somewhere and you can kind of stand them up on your table if you would like you could also do a combination of a couple smaller bugs all together that are mounted in the picture so we're going to go ahead and start and i'm going to go through all the materials that are included in your kit first and explain what each of them are for and then i will walk you step by step through the project okay So what we're going to do is each of you will have a piece of cardboard inside of your um, kit, as well as some watercolor paper. Some of you may have a large piece, some of you may have two pieces. We just wanted to be able to give you enough so you would have um, for ample bugs if you wanted to do multiple bugs. The first step that we're going to do is we are going to take our watercolor paper. And to make our bugs, we need to really focus on making sure that they are symmetrical, which means that they are even on both sides. So what I found was the easiest step to do was to take my paper and just take a corner of it and fold it over. And make sure you press down nice and firm. And you will have a nice little fold. I didn't draw my shapes out, but if you want to draw your shape out, we are going to be working on the main body shape first because you're actually going to end up making two to three different body parts, but we are going to make on the large one first. So you can go ahead and kind of draw out whatever shape you may want for your bug on half of the paper. Then you're going to take some scissors, keep your paper folded, and you are going to cut it out. Now we have included everything that you need for this in your kit. The only thing that you will need from home are just a pair of scissors. And the watercolor paper is kind of thick, so sometimes really small kid scissors may not cut as easily. So you may want to see if your parents maybe have something a little bit larger, but I think most of you will be able to handle it just fine. So you see right there I have my basic bug shape. Then I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold over and I'm going to draw a slightly smaller shape. And that's going to be kind of for the middle of the body. And I think I want my shape to look like this. And like I said, it's up to you how you want to design your bugs. You can make them rounder, thinner, longer, whatever style of bug you want to make. It's up to you. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut it out. And there I have another part for the bug's body. I'm gonna go ahead and bend this over so we don't see our pencil or marker lines, making sure that we have a nice, clean side of the paper. And then I'm going to cut a little oval for the head. you'll go ahead and you'll cut out your shape and once you unfold it if you don't really like the shape how it turned out don't worry because you can always adjust it if you need to I went back and forth and adjusted a few of them like I kind of run around this out a little bit more on top so I'm going to take it and I'm going to round it out to kind of make it more like a little arch for the top of the head okay once you have all of your body parts for each of your bugs, you see I'm gonna kind of assemble it like this, and that'll be my bug. As you can see right there, I've got all three body parts together. Once you have all of them cut out, I did small, medium, and large. I did you know various sizes. But once you've got them all cut out, you get to go ahead and start painting. In your kit, you will see that we included your primary colors. We have our yellow, our blue, and our red, and we also gave you some black and some white. Those of you that have been in the studio before that have come for either parties or classes have probably seen our cool kind of color wheel diagram, but we made more of a triangle, which talks about color mixing. 
color mixing is very important because we want to make sure that we don't end up with just several brown colors. So it's a little bit of a guide. We're going to take a picture of this and send it to you in your email as well. So you have it available, which talks about how to mix colors and what colors you will end up with. So for example, we have our primaries. Like we said, we have our yellow, our red, and our blue. And if you wanted to have an orange bug, if you look over here, if you take a little bit of your yellow and a little bit of your red, and mix it together, you'll make some orange. Same on this side, if you wanted to have a green bug, you'll take some of your blue and some of your yellow, mix it together, and you'll get a green. If you wanna have a purple bug, you'll take some of your red and your blue, mix it together, and you'll have some purple. Now, depending on how much you add of each color, you might get different shades of the color. We also wanted to include the white and the black in case you wanted to make your colors lighter. Like for example, you can turn your red into a pink, or if you wanted to make a really dark, like midnight blue, you could take some of your blue and add a little bit of black to it. Um, so you can change the shade of your colors as well. So part of this project is also going to be just having some fun with color mixing and experimenting and making new colors. You will also have a paper plate in your kit, which is for you to do your mixing on. Now it's really important, and we say this to all of our friends as well as a reminder, that when you are mixing your colors, try not to mix all over your plate. I'm going to kind of give you an example here. You're going to take, I'm going to make some orange. So I'm going to take some red, kind of scoop enough because I know I want the main body to be orange. So I'm going to take some red, I'm going to rinse my brush. You'll need some water, a little cup of water or something and a napkin. I'm going to rinse my brush clean it and dry it off really well because we don't want to get water in our acrylic paints. We want to keep our brush nice and dry. And I'm going to add some orange now. Sorry, I'm going to add some yellow to make some orange. That's silly. When I mix the two colors together, I'm going to try to do small little spirals like this. Just spin around really small in the same area. Try not to mix all around your plate because when you do that, what you end up doing is you just waste all of your paint all over your plate and then you won't have any paint for your project. So I'm going to mix the two colors together and as you can see the yellow and the red are making a nice kind of fiery orange and that's what I had in mind for my bug. So I have my color here and I'm going to go ahead and start taking my orange and I'm going to paint the main base of my bug. Now because we are using acrylics the fun part of this is, is that you will get to layer colors and make designs all over the body. If you are unsure how you want to plan out the designs on your bug, I strongly suggest that you practice on a separate sheet of paper. So for example, let me show you right here. Not on your watercolor paper, but you could always do a scrap piece of paper at home. Let's say we have our bug. And I know that I want my bug to have little arches coming in from the side like this. And I know that I want my bug to have stripes coming up along the side of its back. Or you may want your bug to have some polka dots on it. Plan these things out ahead of time. So that way when you go to start painting your bug, you kind of have an understanding of what you would like your bug to look like. If you would like for it to have perhaps some other dots or designs on the different parts of the body, plan those out as well. That way you have an idea of exactly where you want to put your paint. So let's go back to painting the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the body. And I know, for example, that I want the bottom of its body here to have a different color on it. So I'm not gonna bother going all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna stop about right here. There's my fiery orange on my bug's back. Because I know that I wanna come back and do designs on this part of its body, I'm gonna set it off to the side and I'm gonna let it dry a little bit while I paint the other parts of the body here. So I'm gonna rinse my brush. Make sure I dry really well so there's no water on my brush. And now I'm gonna do my next color. For this part of the body, I actually want it to be a really light blue. So I'm going to take quite a bit of white, rinse my brush, dry my brush, 
And then I'm going to add just a little bit of blue because I want it to be a light blue. So I'm going to mix, once again, small circles rather than spreading it all over the plate and wasting out all of your paint. Small circles, and they're perfect. I have a nice light, black, light, light blue. And I'm going to use the light blue for the center part of its body. For those of you that are going to be painting with this at home, once again, these are acrylics. They are permanent paints. So you want to make sure that you're wearing an old t-shirt or a smock and that you have some protection down on the table. We have our brown tablecloths that we like to use here at the studio, which is why it's not a problem that I'm getting it on the table. But you definitely don't want to get this on your table at home. So make sure that you've put down an old piece of newspaper or maybe an old tablecloth um, or an old piece of a sheet or just some paper towels underneath you. Just anything that you can paint on top of to make sure that you don't get it all over the table. Now I'm going to use some yellow for the head. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice bright Head. Okay, so I have the head, I have the center part of the body here, and the large body. Now, I've given this a little bit of time to dry, so it should be okay. You could always give it a little bit longer at home. I just don't want to wait too long now, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward but you can go ahead and leave it as long as you would like at home. If you wanna have some really cool designs, I would wait for it to be completely dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. So I want to have some blue on the bottom of its body here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in. Now we have included two paint brushes in your kit. We've included kind of a medium flat brush, and then we've also included a very thin round brush which is really good for doing small areas or little details and designs. So you will be able to have the two brushes to be able to cover the large areas and the small areas. So once that is painted in, I'm gonna go ahead and once again, rinse and dry. Always make sure that you're doing a really good job rinsing and a really good job drying. And now I'm going to come in and I'm gonna start doing some of my designs on my bug. I decided that I wanted this bug to have wavy lines going across the back. So I'm going to draw some wavy lines. If you're unsure about doing this freehand, if you let this completely dry, you can always come in with a pencil and draw in your designs and then come and go back over them with paint. That's if you're not feeling very comfortable with kind of painting your own designs. But if you feel comfortable painting your own designs, then you can go right ahead once it's a little bit dry and go right over it. I also decided that I want my bug to have some light blue dots on it. So I'm going to come back over here to my light blue and I'm going to put some dots on him. These are supposed to be some fun, kind of wild, fun beetles or any kind of bug you can kind of imagine. So don't worry about trying to make it look real. If you don't want to, you can do as many fun and wild designs on it as you would like. Sometimes the more colorful they are, the better they will look. So go ahead and add some fun color on there. Now I'm gonna come through and I decided that I want to do some white designs as well. So I'm gonna cut in. And do some white on the sides here. It almost looks like a little bit of an Easter egg, doesn't it? It's kind of fun and colorful that way. And we're going to go ahead and paint that in as well. Okay. And then on this part of the body here, I want it to have some kind of fun designs too. So I'm going to do some little tiny polka dots all over it, little dashes of color. Okay. So once you've got all of the designs that you want on your bug, like I said, you can go as complicated as you want. If you want to go ahead and do stripes and different designs, here's another example as well. 
It's up to you to be as creative as possible as you would like to be with it. But once all of your parts have been painted, you're going to want to let them dry a little bit. And then you're going to go and use the tacky glue that we included in your kit. There's going to be some glue that you can use with your brush. I'm going to pretend that these are dry, but actually you're going to actually want to wait for them to dry a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And you'll use some glue to glue your body parts together. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this piece onto here. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach the head on. I think I want to slide the head up underneath instead of on top of it. So I'm going to go underneath and place it there. And now I'm going to paint little eyes on my bug with my small brush and my dough. bug is done. Okay, so if you look here, the tacky glue will take a little bit to dry. Once that tacky glue is dry and all of your paint is dry, then you will be able to turn your bug over, which I'm just going to go ahead and do anyway. I'm going to slide this underneath it so we don't get it on the table and you will get to start working on making the legs. Now for the legs, you're gonna have a sheet of black paper like this. What you're going to do is you are going to cut straight up the side of the paper in a very thin line. And you'll just cut all the way across. And you're gonna to wanna to cut three of these or four if you want your bug to have antennas, okay? So you're gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna start with just the three for the legs right now. You don't wanna make them too thick, especially if your bug is a little bit smaller, you wanna make them nice and thin so they don't take up too much space. So we're just gonna cut all the way up the line. And then you're gonna need six legs for your bug. So you're going to take your three pieces, you're going to stack them together, or you can do them individually, it's up to you how you prefer. I just think it's easier to just keep them together and cut them, and then now you have your six legs. So what you're going to do is you are going to take your brush and your glue, and you're basically going to place the glue where you would like the legs to be on the back of its body. And just tap them on. Same on this side. Make sure you space them out a little bit so they're not too close together. So if you do want to bend the legs over, like I'm going to show you in a minute, to make them look a little more 3D, a little more three-dimensional, as if your bug is standing up, you're going to want them to have some space between them. Come back over to this side. Remember, we're going to work on making sure that it's symmetrical. So you want to kind of measure and make sure that you're placing the glue in the exact same spot on the opposite side of the body to keep them as even as possible. I'm going to come across here, paint some glue on. Place the other leg. Here's the last one. Once this has dried, because you want to make sure that it has dried, once it has dried, I'm going to set it off to the side and let it dry a little bit. But once it has dried, it's basically going to look like this in the back. You can take your legs. First, they're going to be straight like this. All of the legs will be sticking out straight like this, kind of off to the sides, like these kind of angled lines. What I did is that I came in and I kind of found a spot on the leg to kind of bend it at an angle and put a little bend in it. Same thing here, bend it at an angle and kind of squeeze down. And I did that for each of the legs. That way they kind of looked like they were kind of crawling on the ground a little bit better. You see? Same thing over here, you're gonna take the leg and this is once it's dry. Remember, you're gonna give it time to dry. You're gonna bend the leg, take your paper, bend it, take your paper and bend it. And then if you wanted to make antennas, You'll just cut two little pieces as well. Now, some of the bugs, I gave them really big, long ones. So you can leave really big, long ones on them as well as you would like. And some of them, I made short little ones. Once your bug has dried all of its paint, all of its glue, 
you've got all of the pieces on its body, you're going to take it and rebend it just a little bit like this, kind of bend it down the middle to kind of give it a little bit of like a dome shape. You see how it kind of curls over like this? That way it's not completely flat. Once you've curved it and you have all of your legs and everything on and it's completely dry, then you're going to take your piece of cardboard you guys will all have a piece of cardboard. This is a scrap one here, so it's not as pretty, but the rest of you will have one that's nice and clear on the front. And you will just take a little bit of glue. You have two choices. You can either put it along the edge, but another thing that works really well also, if you want your bug to kind of stick up a little bit, is if you take some of your scrap watercolor paper, let's say, take like a strip of your scrap watercolor paper, you can cut it into a long rectangle, and if you kind of bend it like accordion style, where you're just kind of going to fold over and then fold over again, see how it kind of creates a little bit of an accordion effect? You can take the paper, glue it onto the bottom of your bug, right here around its belly somewhere. Just kind of glue it on there. See how it's kind of folded still? And then the other flat flap that you have there, you're gonna put some glue on that as well. And that will be glued on to your cardboard. You'll just kind of hold it there for a little bit. And once it dries, it will stick and hold your bug in place. And you'll be able to display your bug on a cool little frame like this if you would like. But once again, you can do multiples, different sizes. You can put them all on there. You can keep them loose. You can hang them on your walls, anything that you would like, but those are the steps to be able to get through your entire project. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed making your fun little taxidermy beetles. If you want to share any of them with us after you've completed, you're welcome to take some pictures of them and show them to us maybe on our uh, Instagram or Facebook. You can always do um, hashtag Yellowbird Studio Tampa, or you can email us some pictures because we always like to see the fun things that you guys are doing. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy your craft and have a wonderful day. Bye.